What's next? Nothing. Nothing. That's it. It's just manipulating those bases to get them to be the same in this section. That's your whole idea here. Now, can I get a little bit more complicated than 16? Sure. Sure, 16 is pretty easy, right? I hope. I hope. How many people are able to understand that, that idea? Good. Notice how you had to get that before you can get this, right? You have to understand that concept. Otherwise, you're like, what's going on with the two? It's magic, Harry Potter. You have your math wand out. And you're just, no, we're, this isn't magic, right? This is using this fact right here that if the base is the same, our exponents have to be equal. That's the whole idea. I'm not Harry Potter. <laughs> I'm more like Voldemort. I've always told you this. You have a <laughs> Except they don't have that nasty looking weird snake face thing. I hope. I hope. <laughs> Let's try another one. We'll do a couple more together. I'll give you a few to do on your own. We'll talk about an interest problem. It'll be very interesting. <laughs> and then we'll continue. 5 to the x equals 125. Are our bases the same right now? No. no. We have 5 to the x equals 125 to the first. That's not going to work for us. We want 5 equals 5 as far as the bases go. Can you change 125 into a power of 5? Mm -hmm. 5 to the third. Great. So our whole goal here is to try to make this equal this, our two bases. 5 to the third, that's the same thing as 125. How much is x? And you're done. As soon as you make those bases the same, you set your exponents equal to each other. Four to the x equals eight. Okay, well, it's definitely an exponential because our, our variable is in the exponent spot. What's our base over here? Four. Okay. Your goal is to try to make your bases the same, right? Mm -hmm. Now, watch carefully. If you get that, great. But, but that's not the only thing we're doing today. So you still got to focus on, on this next stuff here. There's some other manipulation we can do. Can you write this as 4 to some power? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't you give me 4 squared because 4 squared is 16, right? can't do that. can't go, oh, 4 to the x equals 4 squared. I've done. Yeah, it is 2. No, no, it's not 2. Why? If you plugged in 2, you get 4 squared equals 8. Is, does that make sense? No, you can check your work here, right? You should be able to plug in those numbers and they actually work out in your original equation. It does here. It does here. It does there. 2 to the 4th is 16. 5 to the 3rd is, well, 125. Here, we got to change both bases. So occasionally you'll come across a problem where it doesn't look like you can make common bases out of it. Well, this one, you can't write this as 4 to any power. However, do they both have a base that you could write it in common? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How could you write this one? Think about a smaller base. How could you write 4 as a power that this one could share as well, as a base that that one could share as well? You could write this 4, four as a what? 2 to the what power? Second. Okay, so instead of thinking of this as 4 to the x, I can think of it as 2 squared to the x. Is that still the same thing as 4 to the x? Yep. So you're still looking for a common base, only this time you've got to look for it within those numbers. How about 8? Can you write that as 2 to some number? 2 to the third. Okay, I need a show of hands. Some people were able to follow that one. Good, okay, so you can't go directly for the 4 here. You can't write that as 4 to any power. Here, though, you can write this as 2 squared and 2 to the third. That does have the common base of 2. Are you with me on that? Now, this is going to take just a little bit more work on this side. A little bit more work over here. What do you do when you have a power raised to a power? Do you add? Do you subtract? Do you multiply? Do you divide? Which one? I only have a couple people saying that. Are you all familiar with that that is multiplication there? Mm -hmm. So instead of 2 to the second to the x, could you do this? Could you do 2 to the 2x? Two yep. What's, what's 2 times x? You're multiplying those, right? Mm -hmm. 2 times x is 2x equals 2 to the... That side we didn't have to do anything on. Hey, look at the board. Do you have common bases now? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. 
What do you know about our exponents? If our bases are the same, what do you know for a fact about your exponents? They are equal. Look, look what we did over here. We had common bases, exponents were equal. We made common bases, exponents were equal. We made common bases, exponents were equal. We now, with a little bit more work, we made common bases, but what this means is that your exponents have to be equal. You can essentially drop your bases if they are the same in your equation. That's what we've done. We've said, oh, bases, those are the same thing. That means our exponents must be equal. That lets us go from here to here. Would you raise your hand if you're okay on that problem so far? Yes? How do x is equal to 3? Well, this is my exponent, right? Mm -hmm. And that's my exponent. You know, if your bases are the same, your exponents must also be the same. It's got to be there. Just like over here, x was equal to 4, x was, e x was equal to 3. 2x is equal to 3 in this case. Now, are you done? Yes. What do you got to do now? Divide the 2 for the x. If you do that, Is it okay to get a fractional exponent? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in this case that means a square root of whatever that is, a square root of 4 cubed. That's what that means. It's a, a 3 half power. Remember talking about roots and, and exponential powers like that? That's what we've done. If you take on your calculator and you do 4 to the 3 halves, you're going to get 8. If you do it in your head and you go, okay, the square root of 4, remember the square root, what's the square root of 4? 2. Now raise 2 to the third power, what do you get? Eight. You get 8. That means that works out. That is the equation there. That's a solution for our problem. You still with me on this? Okay, let's try one more together. I'll give you a few to do on your own. Can you see how when you get the hang of this, this is kind of fun? It's kind of neat. Well, I like it. <laughs> Okay, just always remember your goal. Your goal is to try to make those bases identical. That's what you want to do. So the first thing you look for is, do you already have some number that you can make the other base into? Well, for, for instance, here, we had 2 and 16. That was great. We had 5 and 125. That was great. 4 and 8, we could not do that with. You can't write 8 as any power of 4. Here, we've got 9 and we've got 27. Can you write 27 as a power of 9? Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, no, no it's power three. I mean, if you try 9 squared, you're getting 81, right? So, I mean, you, you can't do that. However, can you look for a number within 9 and 27 that you could write both of them as some power of? Yeah. So you go 9, 27. Those, ha those should have a common base somewhere in there. Otherwise, you can't do this problem. So you're always looking for that. What number do they share as a base? Three. Three. Okay, three. So now I want you on your paper to translate 9 into a power of 3 and 27 into a power of 3. Do that for me. What's 9? Nine? Nine, nine is 3 to what power? 3. 3 to the what? And 27 is 3 to the? Did you make it that far? Okay. Now, of course, we still have this stuff going on, so watch carefully on this. This was just our 9, right? This is still our, our 9. So we still have this x minus 1 up there. You with me? And this was 27, but we still have our x up there. Little head nod if you're still okay. Yes? Yeah. Guys over here? Yes? Yes? No? Okay. What do you get? Oh, so we're okay getting 3 squared. We're getting 3 to the third. We didn't change this at all yet. What do you get when you have a power raised to a power again? So tell me on my right hand side what I what I need to have. Three to the three times x. Yes? Not three plus x, three times x. We're multiplying those x ones. Now on the right hand side, this one's interesting. Take a little bit of time to think about this for, for a second. We've got three squared to the x minus one. Again, just like this side, what do you do when you have an exponent raised to an exponent? Multiply it. So we're gonna have three. Do I write it like this? No. Oh, no. Because this is my entire exponent, right? It really should have some parentheses around the thing. It really should, because that's my exponent. So when I take my 2 and I multiply it by x minus 1, well, wow, you better have some parentheses there. 
do you see why the parentheses are, are, are important? Mm -hmm. I think I just said, do you see why them parentheses are important? <laughs> We're in Alabama. It's math, anyway. it's math. We in Alabama. We're math. <laughs> see why the parentheses are important? <laughs> you know, when I was 13, I, I went around the country with my parents in a motorhome. We spent a lot of time in Texas, and because Texas is freaking huge, uh, a lot of time in Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, and Florida. And when, when you're 13, you pick up accents very quickly. And by the time we got home, I still had an accent for about five years. I still have it sometimes when we want to talk. I say y'all all the time. I'm, not, I'm from Clovis. <laughs> That's weird. It's weird. Anyway, we got three to the x, we got two to the x minus one. What do you know when your bases are the same? What do you know about those exponents? Well, look what happens. As soon as we get those threes, right here and right here, if you want to cross them out, you can do that. I don't care. But what this, what this comes down to is that now we have an expression 2 to the x minus 1 equals 3x. We have this exponent, that's an exponent, equals that exponent. Do you see how we're getting from here to here? Do you see how we're getting from here to here? That's kind of an important one. You know what people always do? They always give me 2x minus 1. They, they forget to distribute that. That's why I'm having you write the parentheses, write the parentheses, and wait till this step to distribute. That way you don't forget to do that. You with me? Can you solve that? Mm -hmm. Sure, that's, that's a basic equation. I mean, that, that's pretty easy. Of course you're going to distribute. You're going to get 2x minus 2 equals 3x. We'll distribute that too. You'll subtract 2x. Negative 2 equals x equals negative 2. You can plug that in and you can check it. It's going to work out for you. Would you raise your hand feel okay with this so far? Yes, no? Yes. Yeah. You guys over here? Try three of them on your own. We'll move on. Are the two bases always going to be given to you? The two bases are not going to be given to you. Here they, they weren't. Uh, but you, you had to. Are you going to have like the both numbers on either side of those equal signs all the time? You have to. Yeah, you have uh, exponential. You have to have those numbers there. So you're going to be given numbers. And in this section, your only job is really to find out what number you can find to make them them equal bases. That's your only job here. Okay, this last one is a tricky one. You really got to think about that. I'll give you a hint. Think about negative exponents for that. So that's a tricky one. So try those ones. I expect you're rock solid on the first two of them. The last one is going to be some, you're going to have to really think on that one, but we'll, we'll do that one together if you can't get it, okay? So let's take a couple minutes. Things go pretty quick. Go ahead and solve this.